Hi guys, welcome to a new tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be talking about Nanite and how to use it when we are uh, doing a VR experience inside Unreal Engine 5. We'll be covering the topic in this scene. Uh, this scene was made uh, with uh, one of my students uh, who are beginners and was able to carry out all of this amazing landscape in no time which makes me really excited to do this tutorial and be able to educate them even further to become really professional inside Unreal Engine. So let's jump inside the topic. So what is Nanite? Nanite is an optimization mean inside Unreal Engine. It's very similar to LODs. And LODs is a shortcut for level of details. So it's basically minimizing the number of details the more we are moving away from the object and it's maximizing the details the more we are moving forward to the object. So let's put this into application. So we've got this building here and we want to apply Nanite to it. So how do we do this? We double click on this uh, static mesh editor and in the Nanite settings here in the details, we've got Nana enable Nanite support and we enable it this way and we do apply changes. But I want to explain something before. I'm going to disable this here and I want to go and be able to visualize Nanite inside my scene. So I'll do, for example, triangles and nothing happens. If this happens with you guys, don't worry about it. It's because that we've got nothing enabled in Nanite in our scene so far. So if you didn't see anything in Nanite, it's fine. That's because we haven't created any Nanite object yet. So we'll go back to lit now. And we're going to double click on the static mesh editor and we're going to do enable nanite support. And from here, I'll do apply changes. And I'll go to lit nanite visualization and I'll do triangles. And once I pick triangles, now I can see there's a lot of triangles on the object I've already assigned nanite to and the entire scene is black. What does this mean and what does the black mean the black means is that nothing there has nanite right and the triangles here shows me that this object contains nanite technology and let me explain this further if you guys notice the further i go from the object the bigger the triangles are which means that the object details is being cut the more we are moving away from it and this way this helps us to be able to you know, understand the concept of nanite and the, the closer I get to the object, the smaller the triangles are, which means the more details we have on this object regarding uh, the, the polygon count, the materials, the light and so on and so forth. So I'll go back to lit. And this is how we enable nanite and guys nanite helps us a lot in our frames. How do we view our frames? We go from here and we do show frames and we can see that we kind of have 30 frames on an average. Of course, it's not going to be affected massively when I'm only dealing with one object or two objects, but it will be affected when I'm dealing with many objects. So I'm going to click on this mountain, assuming that this mountain is already repeated, right? And I'm going to do a double click here and I'll do enable nanite visualization or enable nanite support and I'll do apply changes. And now I'm going to see if it only applies Nanite here or to the rest of the mountains. So I'll go to Nanite and I'll do triangles. And what I can see is that all the mountains have Nanite enabled, which is good because the same static mesh is repeated, but we don't have this all the time. Sometimes we've got each object is a unique object. So this way I'm going to be clicking one by one and enabling Nanite for is this really feasible? Is this really quick? No, it's not. It took a lot of time before and it will take a lot of time if I have so many objects in my scene. So I'm going to be, you know, clicking enable nanite and I'll go to apply changes and then I'll go to save, you know, and I'll repeat this process till I have everything in my scene already nanite enabled, which is good because I'm gaining more frames, but bad because I'm taking a lot of time to be able to do this. If you guys notice, we had like almost 30 frames and now we've got almost 33 frames. Is there a quicker way to be able to assign Nanite to all my scene or some parts of my scene? Yes, there are. But we need to make sure something is that 
you know, Nanite support gets, uh, you know, bigger and bigger by each Unreal Engine version gets released. So Nanite before was only available for static meshes. And later on, it was updated uh, and developed to be supporting foliage, which was a big move from Epic Games. And now they're working on it even further to make it available for characters. And I believe it's already is by 5.5.4. And, you know, they're still working on doing it on on translucent materials. So if I want to enable Nanite, I want to kind of be smart about to exclude the glass part of anything that I'm giving Nanite for. So in this scene, I've got not much of translucency going on. So I'm, I can be confident, you know, selecting many objects and applying Nanite for. Okay, how do we select more than one object or many objects and apply Nanite 4? We need to go to filters from Unreal. So how do I enable filters from this icon here? I go and I filter. I check static mesh because I want to apply this to static meshes. And I'll click on static mesh from here. I'll enable this filter. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drop down all the way. Shift select all my objects and I'll do right click and I've got more than one way but the way I like to do it is I go to Nanite and I go to enable Nanite for 315 meshes of course that's going to take time but it's not it's uncomparable to the time where I click object by object and I enable Nanite for them what I can do is that I can exclude glass or whichever translucent material I have from here such as this statue but this is already in the uh, starter content and I didn't use in my scene which I'm gonna be fine you know to include in the 315 other objects than you know filtering this object alone and applying to the 314 which I can do I can click control and just exclude that object and I'll do nanite and from nanite I'll do enable nanite from here and it's going to take time, which I will be waiting for. But as I said, it's much faster than, you know, applying Nanite to every single object that I have. And it's, you know, uh, preparing textures, preparing shaders, static meshes and mesh distance fields. So we will be back whenever this is done. OK, so it's done. And as you guys can see, we've got almost 20 frames pump in our frames by enabling nanite for everything and it's still preparing shaders and when this finishes it even pumps even more so it's really worthy for us to consider this inside our project one final thing that i want to give you as an add-on and i usually use in my projects when it comes to huge projects that's number one number two when it ever a vr project so what I do is that if I have foliage, you know, in VR, it's going to show, but I want the frames more than it's going to show, right? However, the quality is uh, the main success in VR for you to be able to carry out something nice and in the same time, something that does not lag. Because once it lags, even if it was perfect, I'm, I'm going to want to remove the headset, which is you know, a, a loss if it was a client. So I don't want that to happen. So number one, what I focus on inside VR is performance. And, you know, if it's performance uh, versus looks, I would always choose performance. It's different than a PC where I can just hold my screen, uh, even if it was lagging and show you guys something that looks really nice uh, as an image. But in VR, you know, my head is kind of always moving. So it's going to always lag and it's going to make me feel sick, which is a no for any customer that uses the VR. So one thing I sometimes use if I have a large landscape like this, I click on the foliage and I go to foliage from here. And I click on the foliage that I've used. So in this case, I'm just going to highlight all of them by clicking the first one. And, you know, I've got 
I, you know, I have fast mouse, so I, I go all the way down and I click shift and the last one. And then after that, I go to the settings here and I go to instance settings and from instance settings, I've got it already turned off, which is cast dynamic shadows. You see, now we've got like 65 frames, 10 frames boosted after preparing shaders. So I've got this checked already, like turned off, but if it's turned on, it looks better. Look at the shadows here and here and even here, but I've got like a drop of five to 10 frames. I go back, cast dynamic shadows. You see, there's a lot changing in the trees, but again, in VR, it's like, what am I seeing? What are my priorities, right? I don't see much of change here. I see much of change in the horizon, which is okay. I can cover things with fog and so on and so forth. So I usually move cast dynamic shadows and cast dynamic shadows, you know, pumps up my frames by at least like five to eight frames, which is really, really, really a great job. If I'm able to make it from smooth to smoother. And you know, that's an overview about some of the optimization means inside Unreal Engine. I hope you guys really benefit from this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment and see you guys in the next ones.